Well, researchers in Singapore are using artificial intelligence to look at brain scans and recreate the images that are seen, essentially like reading someone's mind. CNN's Linda Kincaid reports. Artificial intelligence can write an essay, create a work of art, and now, say researchers in Singapore, essentially read your mind. These researchers have developed a technology that aims to recreate what you see by looking at scans of your brain. Here's how it works. Study participants receive an MRI brain scan while looking at a series of images. So the, Im the participant is presented with a series of images, each lasts for nine seconds with nine seconds break in between. And then now you can see this is the functional magnetic resonance imaging data. Researchers say the AI program learns which images correspond to which brain scans. It translates your brain activity into a language that it can understand using a program called stable diffusion. So next time you come in, uh, you will do the scan, right? And in the scan, you will see the visual stimuli like this. And then we'll record your brain activities at the same time. And your brain activities will go into our AI translator and this translator will translate your brain activities into a special language that a stable diffusion can understand. And then it will generate um, the images you are seeing at that point. So that's basically how we can read your mind in this sense. And we can see the generate images on this side. Not quite a perfect match, but you can see it is a baseball scene. The technology is modeled to the brain scans of individual participants and researchers say it has a long way to go before it can read the minds of the general public. But if mind reading does one day become a reality, they want to make sure private thoughts are protected. People might be worried, right, whether the information we provided here might be assessed or shared without prior consent. So the thing to address this is we should have very strict uh, guidelines, ethical and, and law in terms of how to protect the privacy. Still, the scientists are optimistic that mind reading AI can be used for good to help people control artificial limbs or if they're unable to speak, communicate using only their thoughts. Maybe we can help him to like uh, control their, um, their robots and um, their, their phone like uh, communicate with uh, um, communicate with others like just uh, using their thoughts instead of speech. Studies all over the world are looking into the implications of stable diffusion. Scientists in Japan, the United States and the Netherlands are learning how AI can make sense of our brains. The research is a new frontier as artificial intelligence starts to turn science fiction into reality. Linda Kincaid, CNN. You're reading people's minds. So we don't like to use the term mind reading. These neuroscientists at the University of Texas in Austin say they've made a major breakthrough. They've figured out how to translate brain activity into words using artificial intelligence. These are different images. Earlier this month, they published a paper explaining how they had research volunteers listen to audio clips while having their brains scanned by an fMRI machine. Over time, AI algorithms, the very same tech that's behind ChatGPT, were able to figure out what the volunteers were listening to just by watching their brains. It is just crazy. You can watch how blood flows through the brain mm -hmm. and using AI and GBT and everything else, translate it into words. Yeah, it's wild that this works when you put it that way. Thumbs up, Tony. To test it all out, Professor Alexander Hoot and I had our brain scanned while listening to parts of the Wizard of Oz audiobook. Janip, I only had a brain. Big brain. Yeah. Like obnoxiously big. All right, Danny, we have a picture of your brain. I so, have a brain. Yep, it looks good. I was scanned first, followed by Professor Hoot, capturing images of the changes in our brain's blood flow as we listened to the words from the audiobook and showing how our brains interpreted those words. When she had finished her meal and was about to go back to the road of yellow brick, she was startled to hear a deep groan nearby. You can see that they're getting recordings every two seconds while he's listening to a story. We will feed this data through our decoder and try to predict the story that he's currently listening to. The next morning, the results were in. Okay, so it's been 24 hours since we got our brain scanned. You can confirm I have a brain. Absolutely. Brilliant. So we were 
able to decode some stuff from my brain, not so much from yours. So uh, this is one from my brain. This is from The Wizard of Oz. So on the left side is the actual words that uh, I heard. When she had finished her meal and was about to go back to the road of yellow brick, she was startled to hear a deep groan nearby. And the decoded version of this is on the right. It's, I was about to head back to school and I hear this strange voice calling out to me. So it gets some things right. So this like was about to go back, was about to head back. It completely misses some things like mm -hmm. the road of yellow brick versus school. But then it gets this, uh, this nice kind of example. So she hears something and then instead of a deep groan nearby, it said a strange voice calling out to me. It means sure. something related, even if it's not exactly the right words. Still pretty incredible to think that was about to head back as something that just by scanning your brain. <laughs> yeah. I think that's one of the things that's really surprising to us about this. It can get things like that. It can get these entire phrases of exact words. Mm. Okay, so here's this same segment for you. Now, so we expected mine not to be great. Because we haven't trained the model on you. The whole day I'd be fine, but she wanted me to make it to her place. First, I got a little excited about it. <laughs> the reason it wasn't able to decode my brain was because the technology currently needs people to sit in the fMRI machine for more than 16 hours, so the AI models can train on specific people's brains. Are we going to live in a world where, you know, I can walk by somebody on the street and they'll be able to hold something up to my head and they'll know what I'm thinking? Currently, we're very far from that. That might also never be possible. We can't completely rule it out, but as far as we know, that certainly won't be possible in the next few decades. The real potential application of this is actually helping people who are unable to speak without them needing to get neurosurgery. Now we have this like snapshot of the brain. And Jerry Tang explained how they used OpenAI's GPT large language model to help decode the brain. The GPT model is made up of millions of pages of text from the internet that the AI trains on and learns how sentences are constructed and how people talk and think. GPT basically made our predictions a lot better. But it doesn't just work listening to audio. Professor Hu showed us what happened when he watched a movie with no sound while his brain was scanned. Watch as the technology is able to decode what his eyes are seeing. She then took my hand and held it to her lips. She kissed it. I smiled and oh my she God. pulled me in for a hug. I got her back for about hours. I had to stop the bleeding and gave her my shirt to put over it. It's pretty good. I don't know, it's, it's a pretty That's good description of what was happening here. Wow. Should we be scared by the work people like you are doing? We think it's really important to continually evaluate um, the implications of brain decoding and also to start thinking about enacting policies that protect mental privacy and regulate what brain data can be used for. This week, Senate Democrats held a hearing about artificial intelligence technology and ideas for regulation in this space with these fast breakthroughs and few rules. The hearing echoes many conversations about this kind of tech today. There's fears about abuse. There's a whole range of examples from automating jobs and things that might save time to upending national security or how the police do their jobs. And we hear a lot of kind of general platitudes. Well, tonight we turn to news in one specific way that artificial intelligence technology is changing our world, and it is absolutely remarkable. Current medical technology can gather rich information about brain activity. We knew that. But now, artificial intelligence language models are providing a new breakthrough to interpret that brain information. New research shows that the tech can help read people's private thoughts, that the science plus the tech enables mind reading. Let me say that news again, because sometimes around here we just report the news, we run right through it, and, and you kind of need to realize what we're learning. And I'm going to show you exactly what we mean by this, but researchers are accurately performing some human mind reading. They can translate a person's brain activity into a continuous stream of text. So then that text corresponds to what the researchers can determine people are thinking. And this is from formal results from a research team at the University of Texas at Austin. Now, the new option raises all kinds of possibilities. One of the first 
is a medical priority, that this can enable people who are currently paralyzed or completely physically impaired to basically get a brand new lease on communicating. The researchers focused on picking up attempted speech of people who have lost the ability to speak or using these tools to help paralyze people, in a sense, write by thinking of writing. So the tech is using scans of brain blood flow and it basically trains this translator or this decoder of that brain information. And they do this by having participants consume videos to map their reactions and basically the intended words their brain would pick about what they're seeing. The researchers are using the brand data to become this translator of the subject. And this has successfully used brain activity to accurately describe events from the videos, meaning it works, they're doing this. So the stuff in your brain that drives you to pick a word, that's kind of what happens before the word, can actually be now read through these sophisticated artificial intelligence language models, hence mind reading. Now, this is a dazzling, actual, appliable type of technology that's here right now. Scientists see a potential to give a voice to the voiceless, like those paralyzed individuals I just mentioned. Others look down the road, especially at how fast this is going, and they see the prospect of a powerful and invasive technology here. And let's remember, I mentioned this earlier in the show, the power of mind reading has long been a sci-fi fascination, upending society to the idea that if you could read minds, the government would have huge tools of potential control, like that famous Tom Cruise movie, imagining a government that can solve and then prevent crimes by reading people's minds and plans in advance. What's coming? Double homicide, one male, one female. Killer's male, white, 40s. Set up a perimeter and tell them we're en route. I'm placing you under arrest for the future murder of Sarah Marks. All we have to run on are the images that they produce. We see what they see. There hasn't been a murder in six years. There's nothing wrong with the system. It is perfect. I agree. We are arresting individuals who have broken no law. But they will. The fact that you prevent it from happening doesn't change the fact that it was going to happen. That was a movie. But back here in reality, this new tech is already raising what we might call non-fiction questions. And your Times proposing scenarios like a future where a private unvoiced impression of your best friend's new partner could be seized. Someone could listen in on it without your consent or knowledge. Or as with those movies, a police state where authorities could eavesdrop on your mental state without your consent, as Vox put it. When you look, Zeke, at these breakthroughs, uh, as mentioned, great promise uh, for people in very tough uh, ind individual situations, medical breakthroughs, um, but great concerns out there, especially with no rules or laws yet, uh, about what else can happen. How do you view this? Well, I'm actually a little pessimistic about it because I think uh, we have great intentions to uh, have therapeutic advances and to really help people. There's no doubt that's what's motivating this research. But we have seen a lot of uh, big tech going and being out of our control. And by our control, I don't mean just Americans' control, I mean all of humanity's control. UT's newest artificial intelligence tool could be a game changer for some folks. Our real hope uh, is that this could help people who have lost the ability to communicate for some reason. So um, people who have uh, locked in syndrome uh, from like brainstem strokes. UT researchers have essentially created a device called a semantic decoder that can read a person's mind by converting brain activity into a string of text. It's uh, basically a model that has been trained with over 15 hours of data per person to take in their brain activity when they're sitting in an MRI scanner and to spit out the story that they're listening to. Participants first listen to podcasts for about 16 hours in an fMRI scanner. This trains the AI to learn the person's brain activity. Later, they go back in to put their brain to the test. And tell the same story without actually saying anything out loud. 
And since we already knew like which words they were going to say approximately and when those words would occur, we could then compare that to the actual words and see you know, how well we were doing at decoding. Unlike other AI technology, this is non-surgical and non-invasive. Researchers say it works, but it's hard to really call it accurate because it doesn't turn thoughts into text word for word. One example that, that we often use is um, uh, the actual story said... Uh, uh, I didn't even have my driver's license yet. The decoded version was she hadn't even learned to drive yet. Researchers say they were surprised the decoder still worked even when the participants weren't hearing spoken language. Even when somebody is seeing a movie, you can uh, kind of, the model can kind of predict uh, word descriptions of what they're seeing. Some might be leery when it comes to mental privacy though, but that's been addressed as well. We also tested whether it could be used on someone without collecting all this training data. So, you know, could you use it on just a random person? Uh, and so far, the answer to that is definitely no. In Austin, Monique Lopez, CBS Austin News.